Thank you for watching KTN News. Welcome back to News Center as we continue to engage on the state of the healthcare in this country. Remember, it's 22 days, doctors outside hospital. And here we're just trying to find out who is not telling the truth. How do we go about it? And now I want to talk to Akili Nurdin Hagai. Now, you say you're a certified negotiator. Mm -hmm. And in this issue to do with that, with, with doctors, the government, national government and county governments, there is the aspect of negotiating which is really key. Now, the government says, we do not have money to pay 200,000. We can only do 70. Mm -hmm. Doctors are saying no. Mm -hmm. In this, therefore, means there is... A, an existing conflict why don't they sit on a table instead of each and every person giving their own statement they sit and agree on how they will get to an agreeable amount you know ordinarily when there's a dispute and uh, the court refers you to mediation you know there's the part of the court known as court annex mediation mm -hmm. to solve matters um, using ADR so when the matter is referred to mediation so a mediator is appointed now a mediator in this case as rightfully said should be an interested party, a party that is, is, is independent, all right? Not from government, not from KP, not from the union. So at the end of the day, we need to know, is there such a party? If there is none, then those mediations were doomed to fail. Wakili, to this point, have you seen such a party? I haven't, to the best of my knowledge, because if you look at it, both camps have statements every other day. And sometimes statements are released at the <laughs> midnight, which is very interesting, you know. <laughs> it's very interesting, you know. That so at the end of the day, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, this is the, these are the rules of mediation. As a mediator, you are independent and you're impartial. What you do, you do not come up with your own resolution. You bring the parties to the table. Sometimes it's hostile. Of course, the first meeting will be hostile. Some will walk out, some won't walk out. But you have, that's why the, the thing's called um, breakaway rooms. So I meet you separately, I meet you separately. I ask you, among the issues you have, what are irredeemable? I come to him asking the same. Then I bring you all to the table. I'm like, from this side, this is what they want, and this is what they want. And we cross, like he rightfully said, they ticked and agreed on certain issues. So from there, there's progress. Now once they get there, your duty is to help them come up with a resolution. And you just document what they come up with. You cannot give them your opinion. Because your opinion then that means you're becoming an arbiter. Now, now there's arbitration all over, all over again. So at the end of the day, I believe the mediation process has a problem. And that is why they're, they're speaking at each other, not with each other. And that we will see this thing go on until kingdom come. Because the problem is, the doctors are saying, we have a CBA when we are meant to be paid, I think, 206 mm -hmm. uh, for interns, medical yes. interns. The ministry has gone and told SRC, that money is too much, give me an opinion. SRC says, yes, we agree with you, take it out to 70,000. So you have not actually helped the situation. Because the CBA, if you have an issue with the CBA, like I told you, if they feel they were untwisted or if they feel they were outboxed in the negotiation back there in 2017, the honest thing to do is to open up the CBA and have a new CBA, but with concurrence from each party. So if you feel 206,000 is a lot, what is doable according to you? And is the other party comfortable with that? Because when you come up with a, a figure of 70,000, they say, no, we can't take that. And you say, you must take that. Upende usipende. Utake usitake on a pigwa. You can't work like that. Because at the end of the day, like I rightfully told you, I have friends who are doctors, some who are going for internship, and they'll tell you. They'll tell you that the work they do, some of them go into, uh, in, into a shift today morning, they go rest at 6, come back from 7, work overnight, then tomorrow they continue the same process. Then you tell them 70,000, 40,000 shillings, they can never agree to that at the end of the day, because these are human beings. And that is why I feel sad when I see, now you see, it has turned into propaganda. Why are doctors, why do they feel that they are more special? You see, the engagement on social media as to why doctors are paid that much, if you're an advocate like myself, this is when you ask LSK. We have those who go for village. They are paid 20, 10,000, and some are not paid. What are you doing as a society? You have those who are in EBK, Engineers Board of Kenya, people who get 20,000 shillings. What are you doing? So we, sh we should not find ourselves fighting professions and saying, why are you special? Ask yourself, if KPMDU can do that for their, for their members, what is my society doing for me mm -hmm. or my council? Mm -hmm. So we need to have a situation where you, you, need, to, you need to award competence. Mm -hmm. Someone has gone to school, has been educated, has spent money. 
So why can't that be uh, followed by an remuneration? And that is uh, Article 41 talks about it. It should be fair. If I am working odd hours, why can't I be paid what is fair? And the worst thing is that most of these doctors don't even have medical insurance. Mm. You're working in a hospital where there are diseases and you don't have an insurance. You're working on patients who have even terminal diseases. Some even have things like HIV. So what happens to you as a doctor? So those are all the things that are in the CB that need to be looked at. And sometimes there are no equipments. There are no equipments. And the state of the, uh, of the machines is, is de deplorable. I saw, I saw a photo of, I think, the doctor's quarters in uh, one of the hospitals in Nairobi. It has bed bags. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about the CB, it's not just about the interns or the money. Let's look at the holistic uh, issues inside the CBA. So at the end of the day, when we change it into why interns being paid 200,000 shillings, that defeats the purpose. Because that now tells us this has turned into a, a political gimmick or a propaganda tool, mm -hmm. which doesn't solve the, the, the solution. Mm -hmm. So I believe when parties come for mediation, the most important thing is to solve a crisis. Mm -hmm. But the crisis can't be solved when the CS is just thumping. Mm -hmm. Let me talk to Kevin now. Kevin, this entire situation, um, at the center of it, uh, okay, doctors are at the center of it, but we have Kenyans who mm. depend on these doctors and these facilities for assistance. We've just watched um, a, a, a news report on how dire the situation is. Some people being wheeled on, on, on crutches out of the hospital seeking assistance elsewhere. Mm. The government is supposed to provide these services that Kenyans don't have. In terms of both sides to have uh, empathy and offer these services, go on a negotiating table and agree on, 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 on something that will help Kenyans. Mm. What is your advice to both parties? Because Kenyans are suffering. Denise, people are suffering and uh, we are losing lives every day. <clears throat> Without just uh, painting, over painting the story, you for instance look at uh, fellow citizens who are being treated for terminal illnesses or diseases like cancer, people who have to go, you know, on a weekly or hourly basis to be attended to. You look at people who are in ICU, you know, people who are uh, being treated at home but, but depend on prescriptions from our medical facilities to, you know, to be given drugs and to even for home visits, you know, to be attended to at home. The, the situation is not as, as, as probably we think it is. It is, it is much worse, mm -hmm. but it is, it is worst if I could say that. Now, what therefore needs to happen is, in my view, dialogue, which is open-ended, a dialogue which is not, as we are continually saying, uh, for parties to chest thump. It is, it, it's supposed to be a dialogue also that has options. So, for instance, for KMPDU, the union, what is your option, mm -hmm. you know? Because as it looks at, uh, as it looks like right now, they are more or less rebutting, you know, and, and just uh, venting on what the, uh, the ministry is saying. This dialogue therefore needs to give room to the union also to provide alternative uh, uh, solutions, recommendations, which of course I know has, has uh, have been done, particularly from 2017 in the CBA. And we also need to take a look at the, you know, the, 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 now it's almost six years from 2017 to where we are at right now. What has been the changing context of uh, universal health care and particularly the commitment of government around how to engage with the unions and much more specifically the service providers. That particular conversation is not what I see happening. The other bit of it is of course looking at uh, the political class. Remember we, talk, we are talking about political goodwill. But on the flip side, we also have our parliamentarians, the representatives. We want to listen to them speak. Yes, of course, we have had Mwishimwa Babu and his team ground also bringing up. And we have also seen an expected petition of removal of a cabinet secretary that has been drafted by Mwishimwa Babu Owino. We want to see a lot of this happening and probably even citizens organizing around health and writing letters writing petitions, writing, uh, you know, uh, uh, questions to the, to the ministry and to the cabinet. And if possible, even send to the cabinet secretary's WhatsApp uh, number, mm -hmm. images of people and how the suffering that Kenyans are going through. And because the president's number is also a public number, send images to the president. Mm -hmm. And because Mwishima Felix Kosge's number is also a public number, send images to his number and record videos so that we see a lot of citizen agency happening to push them from their comfort zones. Now, these are people who probably when they're unwell, 
they get into jets, they fly to Singapore, they fly to South Africa, they fly to the UK, they fly to the US and all that. They have alternatives. Mm -hmm. For citizens like us here, we, we do not have those alternatives. Now, the desire to want to see the collapse of the public health sector of Kenya is what I see happening. The alternative is not what we are seeing being provided in the, in the, in the, in the discussion or the dialogue, uh, the dialogue tables. So in my view, therefore, there is need for us to have concerted efforts of very many stakeholders, mm -hmm. not just the political, uh, not just the ministry and the union, but you want to see what, we know, what they call sometimes amicus, you know, mm -hmm. friends of this process mm -hmm. coming up, including council of governors. They just, they don't have to be part of the, the third party in their ongoing conversation. They are their own entity as a council. There are 47 governments mm -hmm. there. We want to see them coming up so strongly to be able to speak to the national government to respond to the concerns that are making Kenyans to suffer to this level. Wakil, okay. now um, as we continue to look for Amicas, uh, we look at uh, uh, LSK is also raising its voice on the same. And as we have this discussion, therefore, is the need to see the highest office in the land address these issues. I mean, if we can hold a meeting to chair um, grassroots elections on how that would happen, I mean, we could equally call doctors to have this conversation. So how important is the voice, the office of the president to be seen to be on the forefront in handling this matter? We know head of public service is there, the cabinet secretary is there, but the voice of the president in solving this issue, how important is that? And how soon should we see it? Or here. It is as important as him being the appointing authority to the Health of Public Service and to the, and to the uh, Cabinet Secretary for Health. At the end of the day, the second thing, the most important thing is that he needs to realize that health is a devolved function. We can't have a situation where 60% of the money is at the ministry and majority of the functions are at the grassroots level. Mm -hmm. So the earlier they agree that their duty is policy only, and let the devolved functions go straight to the counties, the better. And this is where the county governments come in. But sadly, we have a council that is led by members who are closer to the president, be members of his party, and are afraid to say what needs to be done. At the end of the day, when you have a council where the chair of the council is a high-ranking member of the current administration, and is afraid of telling the president that this function need to be devolved. It's now how many years post this uh, constitution? Mm -hmm. And we are still talking about functions that are meant to be devolved that are uh, under the county government, uh, under schedule of the constitution, and are yet to go there. So you ask yourself, when will this happen? Mm -hmm. There was an indication that the same will happen. There was an indication that the allocation to counties will, will be raised, but we saw uh, the last time it was in the Senate, the money was reduced. So you mm -hmm. ask yourself, like you rightfully said, is there a goodwill? Is there a reason? Is, is there a, a real goodwill to solve these issues? At the end of the day, people speak and say that, oh, there's no money. Do you want to tell me there's only money for refurbishments of houses and buying of motor vehicles and traveling? But there's no money when teachers want money, when police officers want uh, money, when now doctors want money? It's all about priorities. You know, a friend of mine used to tell me, when you feel that you look for someone and you never get them. It's the order you have in the priority list. Mm. So you're either top 10 or below, or you're, or you're playing relegation, or, or you're not there. Mm -hmm. So he needs to tell us as a president, is this issue of health care to the people? Is it a priority to you? Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, Moshe Babuino has gone to parliament. The sad reality I see and I know is that our parliament is captured. Mm -hmm. That motion will be, will be killed. It won't go anywhere because those who are more belong to the government of the day. And these are the same people who passed the Finance Act and later came and said, oh, we didn't read it, it was too voluminous. And those are the same people who are going to interrogate issues on impeachment or removal. So at the end of the day, I am sad because we have lost a parliament. We don't have a parliament, I will say that. As a, as a, as a Kenyan, I feel I'm not represented. And those who represent us are, are the minority. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, they won't have their day, but mm -hmm. they will have their seat. Yes, but that, that, that being said, they still have to have their seat. So, I do acknowledge what he has done, that is Babu Wino, and I hope we do have a scenario where the, the CS is summoned mm -hmm. to explain what is happening. Because you see, her comments as well don't go well with the doctors. Mm -hmm. Because they feel diminished, they feel that she feels that she can control the situation. Mm -hmm. And that is a sad reality. So I believe government needs to put everything in check. Government needs to 
understand that this is a priority. You can't have people who are dying, like rightfully say, those who can't afford health care. You have mothers who are meant to deliver. If they're not doctors, what happens to them? Mm -hmm. You look at, the, look at the situation right now. How many accidents are we having? Mm -hmm. Who will treat those people? Where will they go? So at the end of the day, this is a necessity. It needs to be addressed. These doctors, can, like they say, they can take another 100 days or 1,000 days. For them, they know how they will survive. But us, the sick people, how will we survive at the end of the day? Mm -hmm. So I believe, as he rightfully said, you know, in the Constitution, he says the president is a symbol of national unity. We have two parties fighting. He should bring about the unity and solve the crisis. That is Nurdin Hagai, advocate of the High Court, together with Kevin Osido, executive director, County Governance Watch giving their views and their insights on the matter at hand. 22 days, doctors not offering their services in hospitals. Kenyans suffering, even being forced to dig deeper into their pockets to just afford health care and be able to be well. It is a situation that we continue to follow up for you. Conversations and even negotiations as they take place, as we hope that they do take place and get to, get to a finality, a decision that is happy that will make both sides happy including kenyans my name is dennis asseto the conversation continues enjoy the rest of your viewing good morning